Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Death Trick Double Blind. We are... I think we're only an hour after, <laughs> after the last episode. I'm not sure the time frame this takes place over. It might be a day, it might be a couple of days. I'm not sure if every hour is its own time period or whether it skips ahead... Um, between, you know, major events. I don't know, but we're gonna, we're gonna find out, hopefully. Anyway, let's begin. I make my way to the hotel, trying my best not to draw attention to my attire. Luckily, it's a quick walk, and I think everyone is too enthralled by the circus acts to pay much attention to a homeless-looking guy. The people at the motel recognize me. I tell them my key was stolen, so they provide me with a replacement, after a small service fee, of course. With all the trouble and the humiliation and the physical peril, this job better pay like Rockefeller himself hired me. I open the door to my room. Everything seems undisturbed. I put on a change of clothes and I look around the room. Uh, the key to any good detective work is observation. When you see the magnifying glass icon on the left side, oh here, well, that means you can enter investigation mode. Uh, it'll cost you one action point to enter the mode, but once you start investigating, you can move your cursor around and look at everything in the scene. Okay. All notable items will be highlighted when you hover over them. Press the highlight item to get a detailed description. Sometimes, if something is particularly noteworthy, it might be added as an item to your collection. When you are done, click on the exit icon and leave investigation mode. Okay, cool, let's do that. Oh, hello. Okay, you can move a little bit around the screen. What do we got here? Uh, let's do my side table. A generic hotel nightstand. The first thing I checked when I arrived were the drawers. They were all empty. The ashtray is conspicuously empty too. Either they already cleaned it out, which would make them the motel with the best service on this continent, or I didn't even have time to enjoy a cigarette when I got in. Uh, I think the lamp is the same thing. Let's do his suitcase. Finally. I never thought I'd miss the feeling of clothes on my skin so much. Most of my belongings are still lying neatly in the suitcase. I don't even remember what I packed. It looked like a few days worth of clothes and some of my tools. Ropes, handcuffs, binoculars, uh, stuff like that. Don't think I'll need them for this case. What about the poster? What's this, some sort of flyer? I pick it up for a closer look. There's a flyer for the circus. Morgan's Traveling Circus, that's the one. There's an elephant, a dancing horse, an acrobat, a juggler, and a dark-haired woman in a purple ruffled dress holding a top hat, front and center. The text in front proclaims, performance every night by, with a flowery signature from the amazing Hattie. I think that's our missing person. Okay. Um, oh, there's something here. A map of the local area and a phone book. Looks like I was doing a little research when I first got here. Paper. Oh, his coat. My trusty trench coat. I'll put it on before I leave. It's good for a cold or a rainy day. It's breathable and light. It blends in easily in the crowd, and perhaps, most important of all, it looks great on me. And people wonder why my wardrobe is full of them. Okay, well, I think we've probably exhausted the uh, investigation mode in our motel room. Let's do that. All right, I think I've got everything I need. It's time to meet the client. Are we done here? When you see the map icon on the left side, it means you can choose to move to another location. Simply click and go where you want to go. Okay. So in the future, you'll also be able to choose which location you want to go to whenever you want. This does not cost any action points. I think it used to. I saw a patch note um, on this because I'm not. I wasn't playing it on day of release. It was probably about a week afterwards, um, and I, I'm sure the patch note said that they've they've made it so that it doesn't cost AP to travel between locations. I guess that was um, you know early players maybe weren't a big fan of that. Let's go to the office. Come in. I can't be sure if I already talked to him. Let him make the first move. What business brings you here, Mister? Uh... So he doesn't know me. That's good. But also odd. If I didn't come here to meet him, why was I here? Is there someone else that I was supposed to meet? Uh, well, let's start off about us, I suppose. Well, I should ask you. After all, it was you that called us, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Jones from San Francisco? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I understand I'm here to investigate the disappearance of your magician. 
Well, not quite. You see, there were a few details I didn't want to mention over the phone. I was hoping to let you know in private when you got here. To be honest, I was expecting you here a little earlier. The situation has, uh, evolved since our last call. I apologize. Oh, sorry. I apologize. There was an incident. Regardless, what do you mean, not quite? Do you know where she is? He sighs. I trust that there's no need to say this conversation must remain strictly confidential. Yes, of course. Well, there's no easy way to say this. Hattie is not missing. She's dead. That's certainly one rather significant detail to omit. Sorry, but I hope you understand. We don't really have another choice. The circus isn't ready to handle the consequences of that announcement, particularly when we still don't even know the killer or the motive. You're sure it's murder? Yeah, she was found with a knife in her chest. <laughs> hard, to, hard for that to be a suicide or an accident, isn't it? Okay. I think we need that. Let's, I, I'm assuming we're going to get the chance to move all through these, so let's start at the top. Can you walk me through what happened from the beginning? When did the murder take place? We arrived in Tolji this Monday, before sunrise. It took most of the day to set up, so I gave everyone the rest of the day off. I made a trip into town as I had some business to deal with at the bank and a few investors to meet with. It was raining like hell that afternoon and the road got very muddy. By the time I got back it was almost 9pm and everyone was waiting for me. That was when they told me Hattie was dead. One of our performers, Echo, found Hattie in the storage room. Her pulse was already gone by then. Did they call the police? I called later that night. Wait. Someone had been killed, but they waited until you were back to contact the authorities? Mr. Jones, I know it might seem strange, but you have to understand, in the circus we are uh, very guarded people. Most of us haven't had many pleasant interactions with law enforcement. Usually, we try to resolve our issues internally, but this is not a simple fight or theft. This is far beyond what any of us are accustomed to. I, uh, we were all in shock. So I insisted on calling them. I understand, but then why hire a private investigator if the police are on it? He pauses, pressing his lips together. I could almost see the amount of force needed to clench and unclench it and respond. I called them on Monday night, and they showed up here the next day. They claimed the body, took some photos, and asked everyone a few questions. I ain't heard from them since. Not a single update. I called them yesterday to ask if I could have a copy of the autopsy report, and they stonewalled me. Do you know? Oh, do you know why they're ignoring this case? I just noticed um, he's got like a little badge here on his pocket, uh, which matches this symbol here on this poster: the Great Show, the dancing, tumbling, summers, sewers, tumbling summers. Maybe could be pertinent. Might not be. Corruption, laziness, prejudice. Take your pick. Frankly, I don't much care about their reasoning. In my business, you learn very quickly that you can't buy respect from those who have none. Creative solutions, though, those are always for sale. And that's where I come in. And that's where you come in. So you still don't have the autopsy report? I can call them again, but at this point I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for it. That means you don't have a clear time of death? I believe the last time everyone saw her was around 5pm. A few of my workers saw her coming out of her trailer. No one knew where she went afterward until Echo found her at 7 p.m. And can we be sure that time frame is reliable? Yes, both can be corroborated by others. You said it was raining that afternoon, correct? Do you remember when the rain started and stopped? Hmm, well, it didn't start until after I got to town, so about four. And it had already ended when I got back. And how was the weather these past few days? Not a drop since. Good, that gives us a pretty solid window. I could ask around, see what everyone's doing during that time period. Time of death. So we've, we've established Hattie was killed sometime between 5 and 7 on Monday. It was raining heavily on that afternoon between 4 and 9. But the weather has been sunny since then. Ask the rest of the crew what they were doing at that time. Looking for an alibi, right? It probably won't lead to an arrest, but it should eliminate a few suspects. Good to know. Collect alibis. The suspects are scattered about doing their own things in the circus. I need to find each of them and inquire about what they were doing at the time of Hattie's death. 
So when I click about the victim, I assume it's going to take off an, an action point, yeah? Actually, no. Did Hattie have any enemies? Anyone getting any fights with her lately? Hard to imagine anyone wanting to kill her. We are a close-knit group. We've been performing together every night for quite some time now. It's difficult to envision anyone here killing anyone else. What about someone outside the circus? We tour the country, never stay in one place for long. It's extremely unlikely that my crew have any, uh, entanglements with anyone in this town. So which way would you lean? Outsider or a fellow performer? I don't really know what to think, Mr. Jones. Anyone in particular stick out? Is there anyone in particular that might have a reason to do something like this? Nope, not at all. I don't think any one of my team would do something like this. They're good kids. With all due respect, if I had a nickel every time someone incorrectly said that to me, I'd have retired years ago. I know. Why else do you think I called you? I understand that my judgment might be uh, flawed here. Look, rationally, I know the person who did it was here before the show ever opened. Probably has a personal grudge and has access to storage areas. All signs of someone in your crew. Yes. If, uh... I feel like I know what you're going to ask. Hypothetically, what would you say the killer's motive could be? I'm afraid I'm not the best person to ask. It's your circus. Generally, I try to refrain from intervening too much in their interpersonal relationships. I'm afraid my meddling could do more harm than good. The performers would surely be able to tell you more about this than I ever could. However, whether they will be entirely forthcoming with you is another matter. Well, that's for me to worry about. You just need to tell me who I need to talk to. Well, you'll want to talk to the other performers and our mechanic, Alice. They're the ones that knew her best. Oh, and there's one more person you should be aware of. I'm sure you're aware of what's going on in the newspapers? I'm not, but I nodded and let him proceed. We can't announce the death yet for obvious reasons, but we're under a lot of pressure. The show must go on, as the saying goes, so I had an idea. Oh no, it's never good when they have ideas. What sort of idea are we talking about? I hired someone to pretend to be Hattie until we get the case figured out. Are you telling me there's a fake version of the murder victim walking around? Well, I told her to keep a low profile, so you probably won't even see her around. How nice of you to remember to inform me about that. Wouldn't want to think I saw a ghost. I just thought you should be aware. And just where did you manage to find this replacement? Could this person have anything to do with the case? I looked into it and no, she wasn't anywhere near the circus at that time, so... The, uh, much I'm not sure of. Alright, about the crime scene. Where did the murder take place? Can I go see the crime scene? Well, about that. There is actually no crime scene anymore. Excuse me? What does that even mean? Well, the day it happened, we were busy setting up the circus. Most tents weren't set up yet. The only one we had was a small temporary tent for short-term storage. And that was the crime scene? Yes, we had to take it down because the circus had to open. So we have nothing. Well, the police did take a photo of the scene. Uh, here's a copy. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, okay. Well, there's Hattie. Tied up to one of those spinny knife trick things with a knife buried in her chest. Yikes. Okay, well, let's look at her first. Her hair is a little messy, but the room and her clothing look pretty tidy. Was there bleeding from the wrists where they were bound by the ropes? No, I don't think so. Or were there any other visible wounds other than the knife? Nothing clearly visible, no. No trauma on the head or the neck? No. Curious. What are you thinking? Well, there's no sign of struggle in the scene. If she tried to fight back, it would have been at least messed up, would have at least messed up this room and her clothes a little bit. If the killer was holding the knife when they fought, she would have defensive wounds on her hands. So either she was unconscious, or she agreed to be bound. I initially thought that someone could have attacked her from the back, but that doesn't appear to be the case. I resist the urge to reach for the back of my own head. Different MO then. Alright, we'll check out the knife wound specifically. Were there any fingerprints on the handle? I asked that too, but no, they couldn't find any fingerprints. So, the killer was either wearing gloves or wiped it clean. How about the knife? Do you recognize it? It's circus equipment. It, it's one of our custom-made throwing knives. I don't know much about the details, except they're extremely sharp and well-balanced for throwing. 
I do know that it still takes incredible skill to hit your target with enough force and accuracy for it to stick. Well, there might be one more thi one thing you're missing. Uh, what's that? The murder weapon is a throwing knife, but that doesn't mean the killer actually threw it. No one witnessed the act. For all we know, they might have just tied it to the board and stabbed it through the chest. Right. Maybe that's the point. Nice piece of misdirection from the killer, perhaps. Or maybe there's something more to the knife throwing. A symbolic reason? I can't be sure yet. Uh, what about the board? What is that board? That's uh, an act we do. It was Hattie's signature performance, the knife throwing act. Someone would be tied to the board and she'd throw knives at the board without hitting her partner. The crowds loved it. Could this have been a practice gone wrong? Well, there's just one problem with that. Hattie's the one throwing the knife, not the one being tied up. It doesn't make sense why she'd be on there. Is anyone else in your circus a trained knife thrower? As far as I know, the only one who could do it or is or was Hattie. But obviously she couldn't have done this to herself. Obviously. If you have questions about the act, you should ask Aideen about it. She's our fire performer. She was also the one Hattie strapped to the board for the performance. Must take an incredible amount of trust for her to be tied there while someone is throwing knives at her. They were very close. One of Hattie's signature performance was the knife throwing act, which she performed with her partner, Aideen. As far as anyone knows, Hattie's the only one in the circus trained in knife throwing. Alright, looks like I need to find this Aideen later. Uh, well, okay, so it's probably just this thing. What's that mirror doing here? Oh, it's a mirror. Okay, we can see the back of the board then. Anything telling? I don't think so. Here's the storage room. They probably just placed it there when they were moving everything from the train. So it's not intentional? I don't believe so, although... Although what? Sometimes I've seen performers using it to practice for their performance. I heard it's helpful to observe your form. And the mirror is in the exactly right position for someone facing Hattie to be looking at their own reflection. Hmm. Is it really a coincidence? Is it placed for practice? For some kind of twisted enjoyment? There's no way to know yet. Alright, I think that's all I have about the photo. Okay then, you can keep the photo. I just have one request. And what's that? Please don't show it to people unless it's for a good reason. She was their friend after all. And I'd hope to spare as many of them from seeing her like that. But, well, at least one of them has seen the crime scene, right? The person who discovered her? How long after the initial discovery was this photo taken? The photo was taken by the police after they arrived, which was quite late. The day after the body was first discovered, in fact. I can't trust that nothing was disturbed between the discovery and the taking of the photo. At least let me show it to the people who saw the initial crime scene. Fair enough. Echo, our puppeteer, was the one that discovered Hattie's body. You can ask him if anything is different in the photo. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that just sums up what we just said. That's all. Alright, I think I'm cold caught up. How long do I have to solve the case? We leave tonight. What? <laughs> tonight? Yeah, we were scheduled to stay here for a week. Hattie was found dead on Monday, and I called you Wednesday. Today is our last day. But, but don't don't you still have a show tonight? We have a show every night. How can you pack up all of this in one night? You haven't seen a circus performance before, have you? You walk into the tent at seven, and by the time you walk out, everything but the big top will be gone, disappear. Some people compare it to magic. Can you stay any longer? Believe me, if it were possible, we would. We're a circus. All of our performances were scheduled months ago. We've already sent advanced people to put out posters declaring performance dates in the next stop, and the stop after that. We can't really afford to get delayed. Oh, wow. Sorry, never thought that much about how all these things are supposed to work. Much like our performances, the business walks a tightrope of schedules and timings. Everything has to go according to plan, or it will cause a chain reaction of everything falling out of order. The big show starts at 7 and ends before 10. The train will start leaving in sections, with the last one departing less than two hours after the show ends. So we've basically gone until midnight. So you're telling me, any witnesses or evidence I could possibly have will all be gone before midnight? That's right. It's like Cinderella, but instead of a princess, I'm chasing a murderer. 
Well, when you put it that way. Well, it seems like time is short. I'll need anything and everything you can give me about the case. I will also need to speak to some of your people. Of course, whatever you need. And if they ever manage to send over the autopsy result, I'll let you know as soon as possible. I'll give everyone a heads up about you being here, and you can talk to anyone on staff. But it is a show day, so they might still have responsibilities that keep them busy at times. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, and there's one more thing. What else? Well, this is a circus, and there are certain uh, trade secrets that we have to protect. What does that mean? It means that there are certain areas only available to members of the circus, and I'd prefer it if it stayed that way. You hide a detective, yet you still want to keep all of your secrets? Not all of them. Only the stable and backstage areas are off limits, and do not go barging into people's private rooms on the train without permission. They tend to be very territorial. I'm beginning to think you don't even want me to solve this case. Uh, look, Mr. Jones, I have been completely honest with you up to this point, despite my hesitancy. So I will give you one more hard truth now. Hattie is dead, and there's nothing I can do to change that, including catching who did it. Tensions are running high, and the best thing I can do is to keep everything running as usual, and maintain a sense of normalcy for my people. I've been through enough goodbyes to know the change is the last thing the folks want at this moment. So yes, of course, I care about solving the case. I wouldn't have called you here otherwise. But do I care about it more than keeping the circus running and keeping everyone from falling apart? No. Well, you were the client. I'll work with your restrictions. Can't guarantee how much they'll impede the work, though. No, that's all I can ask for. I know the conditions are difficult. Just do your best. I always do. I appreciate it. It seems like we have a little more time. If you have more questions about the case, you can ask me right now. Um, so we got two time units before the end of this period, so... I mean, there's lots I want to ask him about. But we could... Um, we could tell him about the attack. Sure I want to tell him about this? I don't want him to question my competency or something. Oh, um, yeah, fine, okay. <laughs> fine. I thought he might have... Been, yeah, okay. Hmm, okay. I picked up one of these on my way here. He takes the flyer I handed to him and watches her, winces the line that reads performances every night by the amazing Hattie. I had to make an emergency phone call to my advanced team in the next city so they'd stop passing those out. But I guess, with the news of Hattie's disappearance all over the papers, we're lucky we don't have to explain why. How many of these have you made? Thousands. We use them in every city. As I said, we have a team that moves ahead of us, passing out flies and putting up posters in all future stops, as well as booking supplies. We made this batch when the year started, as by Alice's design. I loved it. Hattie loved it. He laughs bitterly. Guess they're all useless now. That's unfortunate. That's the least of my concerns right now. I haven't even had time to think about this until you brought it up. The printing costs and the loss of marketing it, haven't you? Revenue are nothing compared to losing Hattie. Not to mention we still haven't found the murderer yet. No one is safe right now. Keep the fly, Mr. Jones. I guess it's a good memento for this case if you manage to solve it. We could ask him about uh, Rolf. Now, I know that you said you can't imagine anyone in the circus could have done it. He gives a long sigh that indicates he knows what question's coming. But I'd still like to know more about the suspects. Now, instead of asking yourself, could this person have done it, I want you to imagine that they had done it, and that you're now only looking for motive. I'll try. What about Rolf? Why would he have killed Hattie? He rubs his temples and thinks for a few seconds. I don't know. I can't imagine Rolf ever doing that to anyone. I know he looks intimidating, but he's the kindest soul I'd ever met. He once got drunk and cried because he accidentally stepped on a spider. <laughs> I can totally imagine him doing that. Um, but back to assuming he's the murderer. Could he have anything against Hattie? No. Honestly, I can't think of anything. Truthfully, they never interacted much, at least not in front of me. I don't think I saw them all talk or spend time together outside of simple greetings. Their work didn't intersect that much. Why do you think that is? What do you mean, why? They just didn't know each other very well. 
Rolf's a friendly guy, right? He was willing to help me even when he thought I was just a random stranger. For example, does he barely interact with any other performer? He's close with Chip. Casual friends with Aideen and Alice, even Echo, but they've been here for longer. There's still something weird about it. How can two people work and live in the same place and share so many friends and yet seem to not know each other, unless they were intentionally avoiding each other? But if they were doing that, then why? Well, there are probably many things about their private lives that I don't know. Maybe you should ask him yourself. All right. End of turn, there we go. Yeah, you don't get many opportunities to show people things. You've got to be quite targeted with it, haven't you? Anyway, it looks like we're going to switch to uh, Jackie. Okay, so we have the fortune teller. Ten okay, so it's telling us where people are. That is useful. Um, so we could speak to the fortune teller. I don't know who this is. Um... Rolf, we've obviously met in our other guys. Uh, God, it's difficult because time is so limited, isn't it? Uh, to Jackie, what was her modus operandi here? It's to do a good show, isn't it? And kind of to poke around a bit. Let's go and see the fortune teller. I'm leaning that way. The tiny tent looks unremarkable, even shabby from the outside. The little sign leaning next to the door said that the tent only takes one customer at a time, and it's currently empty, so I guess that means I can walk right in. It's the middle of the day, yet the thick curtains block out every last bit of sunlight, leaving only the warm glow of a few flickering lanterns and candles. Blankets, quilts, and fabrics adorned with different patterns cover practically every corner of the room, giving a surprisingly cozy feel. Sat across the table is a young man, no, a boy. As an unexpected assault of bright light accompanies my entry, he squints uncomfortably and pulls his wide-brimmed hat down to shield his eyes. The star and moon adornments on his hat jingle. Um, Welcome, stranger. What are you looking for today? Uh, you know who I am, right? You know what this is about? I gesture at myself. Of course, you're yourself, but not quite. Where there is a disguise, there is authenticity. When fiction becomes truth, then truth is as good as fiction. Uh, sure. We fortune tellers don't look at what you wear or who you say you are. We care only about what the stars say to us. And I thought I was really good at the magic talk. I should take lessons from this kid. Sorry, I forgot to ask you your name. I'm Tito, the fortune teller. Well, Tito, now that I'm here, do you, fortune, do, you do fortune readings for your colleagues? At an employer discount, perhaps. If you are interested, I can offer the first reading for free. <laughs> Why not? Let's try it. He reaches under the table and pulls out a deck of tarot cards, placing them face down in the center of the table. Tell me what you're trying to learn today. Uh, what do people usually ask about? Matters of romantic love, career, health, or just their general luck? Whatever is concerning them at that moment. Well, nothing's happening on the love front and my career is clearly taking a turn. I guess I'll just ask about general luck then. How is my day gonna go? Place your hand on the deck and repeat your question to the cards. Then keep that question in your mind and shuffle the cards. I do as he asks. He smooths his hand over the deck, laying them out on the table like he's a dealer in a high stakes poker game. That gesture, paired with his completely serious expression, is such an unusual sight that I have to hold back my laughter. He glances at me across the table, and somehow I get the feeling that he knows what I'm thinking. Split the deck into three and place them in sequence from left to right like this. He flicks over the first one. The Magician. Well, that makes sense. Not just the Magician, the Magician in reversed position. A sign of... Wait a minute. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, is the card supposed to look like that? It looks a bit like Hattie, doesn't it? Oh, and it's got things drawn on it. It's got like... um. I mean, it's upside down, but it looks like maybe birds or doves or something? The man in the card is wearing a top hat and a dress? Unless this is some sort of special edition circus tarot card, I don't think it's supposed to look like that. Oh wait, someone's drawn- it didn't- it's, someone's drawn on the hat. And yeah, and shaded the dress. They've made it look like Hattie. But it didn't- it didn't always look like that. That's interesting, okay. That's, um, 
A long story? Yan did that. He looks a little embarrassed and solemnly clears his throat. I assure you, it doesn't interfere with the reading. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. You were saying? The magician reversed. You are in a situation full of illusions and trickery. Well, I, sh I should think that's obvious with this whole situation. Tito doesn't even respond to that. I thought he might be mad at my somewhat flippant attitude, but when I look at him, he appears confused about something. This card should represent your past. Perhaps he's trying to say that you've already completed your illusion by stepping into this new identity. To make full sense of it, I need to look at the next card. Huh, now it's getting interesting. Seven, seven of cups. Choices, confusion, wishful thinking. Someone's drawn on clouds on this one. Uh, looks like one of those sort of through the head arrow things, but kind of like droopy. Okay. This card represents your present. You face a multitude of choices and you may not be sure if they will work in your favor, thus the confusion. The most you can do is wish for the best. Sounds awfully vague. Perhaps he says that to all his clients. And I suppose the third card will represent my future? Hope it's not some generic line reassuring me that everything will be fine. <laughs> they don't have drawn little parachutes on them. <laughs> the tower. The tower. Disruption. Sudden upheaval. Potential disaster. Definitely not generic. Definitely not reassuring. He sounds grimly serious. However, that effect is significantly mitigated by the doodles on the card. Someone drew colourful parachutes to the two people jumping out of the flaming tower, making their descent look gleeful rather than die. Ahem. <clears throat> right, right. Potential disaster. Well, that doesn't sound good. You came seeking answers about your fortune. So from these cards, what do you see? I see... Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think I see the candlelights jump in the corner of my eye. Tita continues to speak, slowly and clearly, every syllable bubbling like water on the cusp of boiling. I see misfortune in your stars tonight. Uh, what do you mean, misfortune? Like stubbing my toe against a table misfortune, or like there will be blood misfortune? That's up to you to interpret. I thought you were the fortune teller. That's all I can give you. Well, well, anything I can do to avoid this misfortune? Being able to tell you your fortune doesn't mean being able to change them. Well, what's the point of knowing then? Sometimes I wonder, too. So that's it? You tell me ravens are going to visit my bed tonight, and that's all? There is one more thing I can do. I believe you will find it helpful, but it does not come without a price. A what? Consider the circus a mystic space, and time here a separate entity. The more you do, and the more you learn within this space, the flow of time could be changed. What? In short, the experience you gain here can be exchanged for more opportunities for action. When you have enough experience, you can visit me any time to initiate the trade. Okay. Hello. So total A, total AP plus one. You lose a hundred experience. Uh, well, I currently have seventy-five. Okay. I'm afraid you don't have enough XP for that. Come back when you've completed more tasks. Oh, oh, I see, I see, okay, um, so, I guess I just leave, I guess I just leave him now, like I can't offer asking questions about stuff, alright. Interesting though, it's good that, good to know that. Uh, well, I'm, we still got 5 AP, that was good, that was, that was a free action, that's, that's good. I'm gonna go backstage and talk to this guy we've not seen before. Alice apologizes as she scurries out of the tent, carrying a bag of supplies and tools. I decided to sit back here for a while, get acquainted with these stage tools. I'm making a mental list of all the sparkly scarves, feather bows and wigs, constructing outrageous outfits in my mind. Chip. Hey ya! No, he can be, he can be Northern Irish. I hey ya! That's when someone pops up directly behind me. I jumped. Whoa, watch out there! If you jump any higher, you're gonna poke a hole through the roof. I turn around to see a young man dressed in flamboyant harem pants and a, a red and blue bib? Is this some kind of a clown outfit? He gives me a cheery smile and nods his head, his curls bopping under his tall hat. If anything's gonna poke a hole through the roof, it's that hat. He laughs. Ah, oh, nice to meet you, madam. I'm Chub the Clown, and you must be our new colleague. 
Or maybe an alcoholic, depending on how you say it. He gives me an exaggerated wink that must have strained his eye muscles. You look great in that dress. Harry would be impressed. Call me Jackie, please. You like my hat? Oh, the kids love it too. It's certainly unique. I've never seen a hat like that before. I would thank you. It's pretty nice, eh? Did you want one? I might have a spare line of rent somewhere. Oh, no thanks. I don't think that's my style. Ah, oh, don't be too hard on yourself. Not everyone can pull this off. So tell me, have you replaced Alice? Where'd she go? Oh, you just missed her, actually. Did you need her for something? She said something about helping with the puppet performance. Ah, uh, she's with that one then. Never mind. I'll just spend tight some time with you. Have you... Have you had a grand introduction to the circus yet? I don't, I don't know where it was going there. Who? Uh, Moses asked me to avoid crowds considering this uh, situation, so no, not yet. Ah, uh, you're missing out on all the fun at the big top of the fair. That's so sad. I'm sure I'll get to see the audience when I perform tonight. Ah, it's not the same though. I was going to give you a grand tour of our circus. The sacred back door is the inside of trivia. There's a little stain on one of the flags around the big top from the time we got Rolf drunk and he threw up on the fabric. You'll know it when you see it. If that's what all the inside of trivia sounds like, I think I'm better off not hearing it. Oh, you can give me a tour of this place. Ah, it's not as fun as the whole thing, but I'll take it. All right, if you would follow me. He gives me a sarcastic little bow and then points to the corner. Welcome to the backstage of Morgan's Traveling Circus. It is not where the magic happens. It's a circus. The magic happens on stage. Well, this is where the magic waits in line and gets its makeup done. He points towards the boards that I changed my clothes behind. Over here we have Mr. Trace Spades and Mrs. Five of Hearts. Careful, they're made out of cardboard. They're cardboard and cardboards. You get it? Oh, don't say anything to encourage him. He grins and points to the wig-wearing mannequin's head on the shelf. Here we have our esteemed guest, Miss Daisy Faye, wearing ridiculous wigs and hats as always. Oh, she doesn't like me saying that. Very tasteful hats they are. Actually, you know what? Hold this for me a second. He doesn't wait for my reply. He takes off his ridiculous hat and shoves it at me. Then he then dashes to the shelf and puts on Miss Faye's magenta monstrosity with feathers and pearls. As quick as he left, he's back in front of the mirror, twisting his neck around to evaluate all the angles. Yep, tasteful. I think it calls for some matching accessories, though. He then pulls out feather bows in the most objectionable shades of green and purple I've ever seen and wraps them around his own neck. Somehow, still not satisfied with the outfit, he scans the room and grabs a wooden hammer from the corner, swinging it as if he were a knight of the round table. Finally, we have Mr. Hammer right here. He's kind of useless. You see, he used to come with a high striker machine, but somebody broke it beyond repair, so now he's just a lonely little hammer lying around. Sounds like quite a cast of characters. You know what? I kind of like this getup. Maybe I should build a new routine around it. Chip the handyman? No, too plain. Who else uses hammers? Oh, how about Chip the demolition man? I've never seen a demolition man dressed like that. Wow, that'd be a part of the routine. A demolition man who likes feathers and hats, but he keeps accidentally destroying them with his hammer. Yeah, need some work. Anyway, that concludes our tour. Mm, thanks, it's been, um, fun. He takes off the hat, oh sorry, that's not, <laughs> he takes off the hats and the bows and piles them up on the couch. I hand the hat back to him and he puts it back on with a grin. So, you met everyone yet? I met Alice and the boss, obviously, but they were kind of busy. Oh, you've plenty more to go then. You'll need to talk to the sisters and Rolf and, uh, well, I'll let them introduce themselves. But if you ever want to hear any gossip, you know who to ask. Uh, ooh, we can ask. We can just ask him about people. We, let's ask him about um, Alice. Did you need Alice for something? Oh, nothing important, really. I just needed to go over a few things with her. Don't you need to go and find her? Nothing to worry about. Now I have a chance to chat with you. I'm sure I'll catch her later. That girl needs to be out more often anyway. She's always glued to this place. I call it this... I call this her Wonderland. Get it? Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> yes, very original. People compare our circs to our Wonderland all the time, even when they don't know we've got our own Alice. And you were the Mad Hatter. Ah, 
I haven't ever thought of it that way, but yeah, I'd make a great Mad Hatter. Why is a raven like a writing desk anyway? Never could figure that one out. See, the real Hatter didn't know either. Ah! If you'd, if you'd be a character in Wonderland, what did you be? I'd be the sister that wakes her up from whatever stupid dream she's having. Ugh, such a buzzkill. You see, Alice and I, we are Wonderland people. We believe in white rabbits and Cheshire cats and blue caterpillars. That's why we are here in a circus. It's a Wonderland that never ends. Sounds exhausting. Come on, don't be such a downer. You're here now, ain't you? I'll invite you to my tea party. The tea party you were cursed to have because time stopped at tea time? No thanks. Hey, the circus is like a big tea party. Time stopped and every day the same thing happens over and over again. The same shows in the same order. Doesn't mean it can't be fun. Maybe it's just not my cup of tea. Oh god, I've been infected with the pun virus. We stare at each other for a second and burst into laughter. <laughs> um... I was thinking, what else could we ask him about? Well, ask him about the fortune teller. You know Tito, right? The fortune teller? Of course, we're best buddies. I find it hard to believe that he could call you his best buddy, or anyone really. Well, of course he wouldn't put it like quite like that, but we're friends. He's apparently best buddies with someone at least 15 years his junior, and yet somehow he's the immature one in this friendship. But what do you two even talk about? Oh, all sorts of things. Work, life, politics. You've met him right. Ked's very insightful. Sure. And we play cards sometimes. You mean tarot cards? No, but also, yes. Oh, did he say Chip was the one who drew on the cards? I think I think he did say that, didn't he? So he's the one who's been doodling on all the cards. How much do you know about tarot? Uh, there's a lot of cards. Don't worry, I didn't know in it to neither before I met Tito. Long story short, there are a bunch of special cards and the rest are pretty much poker. Something tells me that is really making a long story short. So what, you use his tarot cards to play poker? Yep. But it's even better than poker. What sort of poker do you play? Oh, all sorts. We started with 21 or blackjack as some call it. That's the easiest one and super easy to play with tarot. And Jan taught us something she used to play when she was younger. It's... Yes, when two is the biggest card and everyone tries to get it rid of their hand. Or was it Jan who drew on the cards? I can't remember if it was Chip or Jan. It might have been Jan. I forget the name. No one could pronounce it. But she explained it had something to do with swimming. And so we all call it the swimming game. I learned this version from a bar in Rubstone, Texas. They called it Hold'em or something. You try to bet based on the cards in your hand and on the table. It has all these rankings, which I had to memorize while playing and, dr and drinking. Lost all the money in my pocket that night. But I think, I think I got the rules in the end. You bet on poker games? Oh no, not with Tito. Never. Well, there was that one time we bet over fresh cookies. Anyway, we play all sorts of games. We have a stand and appointment, 1pm during my break every day. Come join us. We'll be back in the fortune teller's tent. The small one with a star on top. You'll know it once you see it. I'll teach you, and then we can play a few rounds. What do I win? And will cookies be involved? Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Mm, let's ask him about Hattie. What was Hattie like? Hattie was just Hattie. I don't know what to tell you. Hattie's just Hattie. She was always smart and perfect like that. And then why would anyone want to do that to her? I take it from me, it's not easy being beautiful and brilliant. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, right? He makes an exaggerated gesture of looking at me up and down and winks. Flattery will get you nowhere. Hey, no flattery here, just my truthful observation. You were saying? Alright, you don't like compliments, fine. From this point forward, I will refrain from making comments about your looks and your intelligence, even though both are outstanding. Ahem. Well, as it turns out, people don't always like it when someone else has those qualities. What do you mean? Do you want to hear a story? Uh, sure. Close your eyes and imagine. It's seven years ago and you've been studying with this master magician for three years. But then suddenly he accepts another student, a woman. Almost unheard of in this industry. She's younger than you, and brighter. Anything that takes you weeks or months to learn, she masters in a few days. I don't know where his accent's going now. 
Just a few months later, he's already teaching her all the tricks that he didn't teach you. And this keeps happening, so much so that you lose your confidence in the magic tricks and decide to move to another discipline altogether. Three, ye three years of training down the drain, and now you have to play with puppets. Oh. So you finish training again and start working, and you finally manage to find your own place in a circus. But then, she somehow follows after you like a leech. She's gone a bit scouse now. And now she's headlining every show, getting applause for the tricks that you were taught first, while you remain the pathetic puppeteer in the shadows. It's like what happened seven years ago all over again. Well, imagine how that must feel. Why did you just tell me that story? Are you accusing someone, the puppeteer, of something? Oh, I forgot, our circus also was a puppeteer. What a coincidence. His name is Echo, by the way, and he's the one who found the body. According to Chip, Echo had always been jealous of Hattie's talent. He claims that seven years ago, Echo was forced to abandon his role as an apprentice magician after three years when he was outshone by Hattie, and who had just started her apprenticeship under the same magician. Are you accusing Echo of murder? No, 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 we're just gossiping, ain't we? I was just telling a story. What are you gonna do? Report it to the police? I'm pretty sure they don't care about this case. Besides, I'm willing to bet my head of hair that little Pinocchio was the worst tale about me. Uh, okay, so one of our things is to uh, ask everyone about Hattie, so there's quite a few we haven't done yet. Uh, Alright. We should go and see this Echo. We c I mean, I'm tempted to sort of leave... to maybe leave the... I don't... maybe not... I don't know. This thing, I've got two AP, so I could go somewhere else and try and meet someone else. Could be an idea. We could go, we could go and meet, um... Rolf with Hattie. The stable is nestled in a semi-secluded area far from the entrance of the circus, where trees obscure a part of the view. Guess it maintains some mystique around the off duty exotic animals. I step past the danger sign in front and make my way through haystacks to the horse stalls in the back. A mountain of a man hunches over in one of the tiny stalls, his hands making quick work with the rope while mumbling something to a horse. The horse sees me approach before the man does and it nudges at his chin with his head. Sorry, at his chin with his head, yeah. He can't exactly turn around in the confined space, so he has to twist his neck at an awkward angle to glance back. Excuse me, ma'am, you're not supposed to be... Oh! He looks up in the middle of his sentence and promptly swallows the rest. I should probably explain. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm pretending to be Hattie. There's no one else around watching unless you count a few dozen animals. But I still feel the felt the need to whisper the second part. Mr. Morgan told you guys about his plan, right? Otherwise this is going to be uh, hard to explain. Yes, yes. Sorry, it's just uh, you're wearing that and for a moment it felt like... Uh... Like you seen a ghost? Yes. Anyway, it's good to have you here, even if you can't be youth for a little while. Oh, well, it's good to be here. We stare at each other for a second, me trying to shake straws of hay out of my dress, him still painfully twisting his head around like an owl. The horse he's working with snarts impatiently. That finally broke his trance. He finally maneuvers himself out of the stable, but not before quickly patting the horse on his muzzle. So, you are here to say hi? Well, yes, I'm just trying to introduce myself to everyone in the circus. Well, you know me now. Oh, I guess I haven't even told you my name yet. <laughs> I'm Rolf, the animal trainer here. And by the way, this is Muffin. The pale one over there is Waffles, next to her is Pancake. And this black beauty over here. Can I guess? He must be, uh, Burnt Toast. Actually, that's Obsidian. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought we were working with a breakfast food theme here. No, oh, <laughs> that's because old Obi's mine. So you named him and someone else? I'm guessing a breakfast lover named the rest? Actually, it's the other way around. It's a kind of long story. I've got all the time in the world. I grew up with the Obsidian. He's the horse we had at Collins and Lucas, the, tra the circus my parents worked at. When they brought him in his little fall, I was barely as tall as he is. I'm obviously taller now, and he's quite an old fella. So when my parents retired and I left to come work for Mr. Morgan, I... Just had to take old Obi with me. Uh, let's ask about the more obvious thing, I suppose. When was that? And my parents decided to retire the moment I turned 18, so six years ago. 
You've been working here for six years? Yeah, I think most people from Moses' old crew were nearing the time by then. I was one of the first new people working here, alongside Chip, who was just a kid too. Ah, uh, you should have seen us. It was a funny mix. Both the oldest and youngest people in the business. But we got the circus up and running eventually, and look at it now. And of course, good old Moses is still going strong. He must be in his fifties by now, no? I don't know exactly, but he's been working in the industry since the early days of Barnum, so he's got to be approaching seventy by now. But it's hard to tell just by looking at him, isn't it? Anyway, I've got Moses to thank for Obsidian. If he didn't agree to pay to buy Obi off my old bus, who knows where Obi and I would be now. It really is a lovely horse. Great, I guess I should say hi. Hi, Muffins. Hi, hi Waffles. Pancake. And hello to you there, Obsidian. And of course, hello to you. I'm sure the bus already said this, but welcome to Morgan's Traveling Circus. Now you're one of us, no matter how long you're staying. It must be kind of intimidating to get to know all these new people and stuff, what with having to keep your identity secret and all that. Thanks. Well, I'm just trying to remember everyone's names and stuff, and hope I don't screw the pooch. I'm sure you'll do great. Otherwise, the boss wouldn't have chosen you. Well, you've been working here for a while, so you must know everyone pretty well. Yes, of course. If there's anything you need help with, I'm happy to talk. Um, so I've only got two points. I want to ask him one about Jackie, as we have to ask everyone about Jackie. And I want to ask him about uh, Echo's Jealousy. Did you know... Oh, sorry. Um, Did you know Hattie very well? Oh, that, that was in... The, the font was in the wrong color. Did you know Hattie very well? Yeah, not really. She was still kind of new here, and... Uh, you didn't get along? Yeah, it's not like that. We just uh, we never talked much, I guess. Was she difficult? No, no, nothing like that. She was nice. It's a shame what happened to her, but no one saw this coming. It's not like... Uh, well, it's not like anyone hates her or anything. Is there any reason why you didn't get along? Uh, we never talked about it. Talked about what? <laughs> I don't even know if there was anything to talk about. But you implied that there was. I sense some juicy gossip here. Uh, it's not her, it's me, I guess. Hmm, where have I heard that before? But he doesn't notice me in thought. He's in his own little world, shaking his head and rambling on. Yeah, she's a smart gal. Maybe she sent something from me. Now I've been told that I'm no good at hiding my feelings. He shuffles his feet and looks at the ground. That's what I think happened anyway. Did he like Hattie? Like, like Hattie? And she didn't return his feelings? Is that what this is? You're still not telling me what this is. Oh, you know what, never mind. It's, uh, it's just complicated. It's not my story to tell. But she's gone, so no one will be here to tell it anymore. But, uh... Why, was she seeing somebody? He stands straight, suddenly alert. His whole stance closes up faster than a mousetrap when someone takes the cheese. What? How did you... I, I never said that it's about... Come on, man, your age. It's not her, it's me. Never good at hiding your feelings. He seems panicked, but also indignant. He plants himself on the ground with a stubborn look in his eyes. When I say it's not my story to tell, I didn't mean that. I, I, I didn't mean there was someone else. I just meant that she's gone and I didn't feel right about this. You can think whatever you like, I can't, and I won't speak for her on what she was really thinking. That's probably as much as I can get out of him, which leaves me even more curious. He doesn't deny it. Does that mean I hit the nail right on its head? Okay, there's something there. And I want to ask her about him about uh, Echo's jealousy. Do you know anything about Echo's apprenticeship? Oh, he studied with the same mentor as Hattie, didn't he? I think I'd heard that somewhere. Oh, so is it true that he originally studied to become a magician? Huh? I... I've no idea. Never heard that part before. Well, what's his relationship with Hattie like? Huh? Does Echo get along with Hattie? I don't know. Echo doesn't really... I mean, I don't even know what Echo being friendly with people would look like. Is he that much of an asshole? Chip clearly doesn't like him, so seems like you don't either. Oh, I didn't say I don't like him. He's, uh... He makes a helpless gesture. You'll get it once you get to know him. I see. <laughs> okay, well, only used, we've only used one time slot so far, so what else could we do?
Try the mind reading act time. Mind reading? For real? If you believe it, then it's real. But, but how does it work? Do you have to ask them questions? Do you have to touch them? Or do you just hear everything they think in your mind? A little bit of everything, really. Depends on the situation. It's hard to explain. Let me put it this way. You look at your animals and you can see and understand things that other people can't, right? Their feelings, their needs, their motivations. I guess. People just happen to be my kind of animal. I understand. But still, humans are just so much more complicated than animals. I think animals generally do what they want, and I guess humans do the same things too, but they lie or hide their intentions. I've come to find that the more people try to refrain from directly expressing their desires, the more they come out loud and clear in some other way, if you know how to read them. Oh, wow. So, does this mean you can tell when people are lying to you? Sometimes. Why, are you afraid I'm mind-reading you right now? Uh, no. <laughs> That's a lie. Well, a little bit. Why, do you have something to hide? A secret? Everyone has secrets. Look at me. Are you hiding something from me right now? What? No! Is this about Hattie? No. Do you think I can really tell the truth just by asking people questions? If I could, I'd be a police officer or a spy or a criminal, or maybe a politician, in the order of increasing wealth and moral corruptness, but not a mediocre magician. Oh, okay. I thought, um, so it is just a trick, huh? As I said, if you believe it, then it is real. End of turn. Okay, I was hoping maybe we could get him, get him to confess something by mind reading, but, but no. Whoa, look at the time. I can't believe I've kept you for that long. That's it. I'll get out of your hair. Is it close to 12 already? Yeah, almost. Oh, you're a new here, right? Do you have any plans now? Oh, what do you mean? Not really. I'm just going to wander around, introduce myself to some more people. Ah, oh, come on. Come with me, then. What? You haven't seen the Cali Calliope performance yet, right? I have a feeling that you will love it. Come with me. Oh. Why do I feel at the time is going to disappear really quickly? <laughs> okay, it's 11 a.m. now with... Do we even know Jones's first name? I don't know that I do. Um, let's see what we got. Well, we got Tito. We could speak to him with the detective as well, because maybe we need to introduce uh, the XP for time thingy. Uh, there's someone there that we haven't met yet, and there's someone here we've not met yet. That could be worth doing. Quick time check on the video says that we're already getting up to an hour, though. So probably a good place to leave it. So in terms of tempo, it feels a bit like um, doing a time period with each of the characters is kind of a, a good a good kind of uh, timing for, for an episode. So I guess we'll continue on that basis. I don't know, as I said, whether we're going to get the chance to do it every hour um, or whether there's going to be time jumps at certain points. I've no idea, but we'll find out. So thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be amazing. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the story so far, the various characters we've met. I must say, I don't think of the characters I've met and spoken to yet. I don't think I've spoken to the killer already. Um, Echo sounding like an, like an early possibility, but um, I'm wondering if this is Echo down here in the fair. So I think I'm definitely going to go and speak to the at least these two. Um, but I, Tito was a free action um, previously, so maybe it makes sense to do that as well if we can before we run out of time units on the next one. But anyway, that's planning ahead. But um, I'll just say thanks very much once again. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be amazing if you could do that. But otherwise, um, I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.